Go about halfway. Hit it more. So, why are we staring at this pile of junk? Well, as you probably saw in a little intro I did, um, we're turning two broken Razor E150 electric scooters and going to make a go-kart out of it. So, uh, I'm going to try and make maybe a series of videos on this in that I'm spending, I'm doing this and spending time with my kids and showing them how to do stuff and how to measure and how to turn junk into other things and um, so that's my priority when we're building this is I'm spending time with my kids so I'm not going to really be filming um, in process I'll do stuff and I'll catch you up so what we have here are of course two E150 electric racer scooters why two um, my daughter when she was much younger uh, and she was actually the one uh, welding in the beginning and getting her to learn how to do that and she's actually been interested cool um, so we had two because we had one here at our house and we had one for her at the in-laws house and uh, both of the scooters broke both of them the motor controllers failed yay razor so <laughs> what do we do with them couldn't really even give them away they're only really good for parts so I was like, hey, why don't we build a go-kart out of them? And I get the kids involved in that, how you do that, how you think things through, how you do a design process, and how you follow through. So as you can see, the frames have already been extended by roughly 34, 33 and a half, 34 inches. And some thought, of course, gone into that. Some of it's a little bit arbitrary because trying to figure out exactly how to get it all put together. But yeah, the end result is these two Razor scooters are going to be turned into a little electric go-kart. <clears throat> and part of that process teaching on the kids is uh, doing things with basic tools, um, basic know-how, and kind of using what's available. I mean, you could obviously go super expensive, get exotic materials and things like that, and, and put it all together and have something pretty, uh, pretty exotic. But we're not doing that this way. So happened on this frame, the outer diameter, and these welds are kind of ugly, they still need to be cleaned up a little bit. Um, and you know, this is fully welded and plug welded in four places, both sides, both all four tubes. So this is gonna be really strong. But the so happens the outside diameter of the main frame tubes on the razor scooter are almost exactly three quarter of an inch. Well, so happens one inch uh, steel or iron uh, plumbing piping as, and we've talk, talked about this before in other um, uh, um, other uh, videos that I've done. Uh, this is where I, where I lie. I forget, but this was, uh, yeah, three quarter inch piping. Because when you're dealing with plumbing piping, the measurement of the diameter is the inside diameter, not the outside diameter. So the outside of this is three quarter. The inside of this is three quarter. Now this was actually, this piping was actually slightly larger, but not by much. Not so much that the welding the gaps up was really that bad. It wasn't that much of a gap. And then like I say four plug welds, and because the uh, frame tubes come to about about here, a little bit past the plug, of course. And yeah, of course the main thing about these two is measure, 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 measure. So making sure that everything is flat square both are built exactly the same i mean they were within an eighth of an inch of each other and so it's a lot of back and forth measure 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 and then tack weld weld up so yeah these two pieces are nearly identical and yeah then the next step of course is to figure out the width and all that stuff and as far as using this tubing also not just convenience uh, for size but convenience for availability and expense. Now of course this is can be a lot heavier than if I just went and got some actual tubing but this is also going to be pretty strong and you know kids beat on stuff you know and I'll know how that goes. And as far as 
same the same little mine too. And then this ended up working out really great. This little plastic plastic boat seat was nine dollars at Academy. I mean, you can't beat it. And it has uh, threaded bosses. Well, not threaded, but it has screw bosses. Well, of course, you put your screws in, the screws will cut the threads into the plastic. But that's more than enough to hold that seat on. So we'll get all the measurements and we'll get that in place. And, and yeah, this, of course, getting the steering figured out. And then, of course, the power. Of course, now I have two motors. Get all that stuff wired up. And I'll get into more detail about how all that comes about when we get to that point. But I just want to get y'all caught up and see if this is a series of videos that hopefully y'all be interested in watching as we progress going through this project. I know my kids are already looking forward to it and they've been having a really good time with it. So stay tuned. There will be more. Y'all have a good one.